Hello my dear brothers and welcome to my brand new video in which we are going to have a lot of fun because today we are going to have a campaign as Bulgaria and we are going to have 6 front war. And it's not even a joke, I'm going to show it to you a little bit later, but before that I wanted to say that uh, before this video I wanted to record video about the Banini Empire as Honduras in the Kaiser Redux, but... It doesn't work, Honduras in the Kaiser Redux is crashed, so we won't see Banana Empire in the nearest future. But anyway, we will have another funny campaign. Bulgaria, real one Balkan Empire. You can ask me, where will you find six fronts to have a war as a Bulgaria? And I'll say to you that First front is gonna be with Romania, second one with Serbia, third one with Albania, fourth and fifth front line is gonna be with Greece, and the sixth front line is gonna be with the Ottoman Empire. So yeah, it's gonna be the mega survival challenge as a Bulgaria, who is going to try to defeat all of her enemies and become a superior power in the Balkans. And of course, take back Constantinople. I don't know what to say else. Just as always, let's start our, let's start our campaign and enjoy. Готов! Мирно! Внимание! Мирно! Заповеди командире! Какво ще наредите? Внимание! Oh, and there you can just read about the wavering of San Stefanian dream, it has come true, and now Bulgaria is a great state, but it has potential to lose its power because of our neighbors who want to take back their lands, but we will make everything that destroy them, or to destroy them. Oh, and there you can read the boring text, probably, I don't want to read it because I'm lazy, but I'll say only one phrase, Greater Bulgaria must remain. And as always, what about our population? Now our population is 10.6 million people living in the Great Bulgaria. It's almost as similar as the modern Bulgaria. Maybe it's even bigger population than the modern Bulgaria. I don't know. But anyway, after the great reunification of the Bulgarian lands, another creating of new Bulgarian Empire, Gigachat Bulgarian Empire, we will have mm, probably like... 14 or 15 million people living in our Tsardom with our great Tsar Ferdinand the First. Oh, and yeah, we will try uh, different strategies to survive, because I have a few ideas how to beat all of them, and we will try all of them. So I'll show you how to destroy each of these stupid neighbors. And one important moment to mention. Technically, technically, you can create a fifth frontline war. It's gonna be just without Albania, cause um, automatically or historically Albania is your ally and it won't attack you anyway. But we will just use Nogbit to make Albania attack us, so technically it's gonna be the sixth front war. But now let's just develop Bulgaria and uh, bring Zeno to the power, cause actually it's my favorite fraction in the whole Bul Bulgarian empire. So, why not? I like Zveno. And important moment to mention. If you want to repeat it, please search the army focus tree line. It's gonna be so important for our campaign. Finally, in the end of the May 1936, we have a Zveno coup and long live Bulgaria. Based event Zveno coup in Bulgaria. Interesting turn of events. So when you get to this point, when you have searched those in the powder keg, uh, you should remember that you mustn't search mission to the Constantinople, cause we don't need to, to sign any pacts with the Ottoman Empire. But with that, you can appeal for German support. I can recommend you to do that, cause German support will help you a lot. Oh, and between these two, choose whatever you want. So my first and main idea is that we will take 6 divisions to the Albanian front and 10 divisions to the Serbian front. 
So my idea includes that, first of all, when Serbia and Albania are weak, because Albania don't have a normal amount of manpower and while Serbia don't have enough divisions, we must take Belgrade anyway. So my plan means that we capitulate Serbia and Albania as fast as we can and we still defend Sofia and some positions in the western Bulgaria. Of course, Ottomans and Swiss Romania will invade my eastern territories and they will conquer them, but after that I'll have enough divisions. And so after this capitulation of Serbia and Albania, we are going to create the one front line, starting from the niche and going down probably to the Sofia, and after that moving to the Macedonia, and there we will have one united front, which will start from the Ionian islands in the Greece, and will go to the Romanian provinces, or even our Bulgarian occupied provinces, under the Bel Belgrad Pact control. Probably, if Ottomans capture these territories, they will sign a peace with us automatically, but we will anyway declare war to them the second time. Yeah, so we can't have any peace deals with our enemies. We just need to push them further, 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 at as much as we can. And I have just a small question. Did my English actually improve for the past months? Cause I think yeah. And how far my English has developed? You can write in the comments, please. What about accent? And some points is real. In some points it's just a joke, it's just for the videos. And some points I don't talk like in the real life. In the real life my English sounds better and I don't spell R as in videos. It's just for fun, it's just to be a funny Slavic man, that's all. So in my campaign I'm lucky cause it's January 1937 and in the February we are going to have war against the Belgrad Pact as well as with the Ottoman Empire, cause sometimes they can even start the war in the beginning of the 1937. So in this campaign I'm lucky. Oh well, it started in the middle of the January 1937. So okay, Ottomans uh, too declared war on us. Oh no, they didn't declare war on us, but actually we will make them declare war on us. Plus, Austrians and Germans are helping us, uh, now it's gonna be much more easier. Man, it's gonna be the preview of the video, it looks so epic when we have the war against everyone. Well, except the Hungary, of course, and the Austrian Empire, cause if they declared war on us, we would uh, have a lot of fun. Now let's just attack them. Well, Albania didn't even uh, fully defend their border, so it's gonna be much more easier. Plus, from the northern Albania we can go to the Montenegro. Let's start. Oh yeah, the First Balkan War. Even Hungary sent me volunteers, thank you, brother. 20th of January 1937, we have almost captured Albania. Well, they have capitulated, now the war is gonna be much more easier. What about the whole front line? We are doing not so bad. We will even capture Belgrade in the nearest week and the whole Serbia is going to capitulate. After that, the war is gonna be much more easier, trust me, brothers. So this is February 1937 and Serbia has capitulated. Now we will have a lot of fun because of all things that are happening on the our front line. Plus, we still hold Sofia and that's the most important moment for this war. If you won't hold Sofia, things are gonna be pretty bad. Well, now things started to get really much more better. But we do not defend Sofia, oh shit. Hungarians defend Sofia, that's not good. Now when we have fully defended Sofia, I can a little relax, cause now situation has stabilized, they have a lot of problems on their front line and we can start our counter attacks and probably capitulate in the Greece cause they have a lot of problems too, their front line is chaotic. And let's finally liberate Albania. Yeah, so the Greek front line is going to collapse, let's try to encircle Greeks and the new prince we will name, okay, he will be Simeon, as the great Tsar. Just look at this front line, it's fucking empty, they don't even care about their front line. Do you think that they will, they will care about their divisions, really? I don't think so. Now I'm just taking back all my lands, I'm moving to the Thessaloniki. It's too easy. It is really easy, because we have even encircled a few divisions and Thessaloniki is still going to fall, like the rest part of the Greece. Yeah, Greeks are trapped in 
Thessaly, Feria and Epirus. Well, goodbye Greece. Greece want to collapse now anyway, just look at their forces and the situation in the whole front line. But we still hold Sofia as the most important moment and the only one reason why we are still holding on. So finally, in the end of the June 1937, Greece has capitulated, but in the main front line we have a pretty bad situation, so now our main goal is to save Sofia and save our front line at all. And in this war right now it has left only two enemies, Ottoman Empire and Romania. Ottoman Empire isn't scary as Romania, because Romania is tougher than the Ottoman Empire, trust me brothers. Now attacking Romania and saying Ottomans has become much more easier because we have enough forces and we can really push them further and further and easily capitulate them in the future. Whoa, 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 whoa. we can make now an cool encirclement, we can... We did a cool encirclement in Altenia, wow. Oh, Ottomans, hello there, we glad to see you. And you have fully captured Greece. That's not good, but now we need to deal with this encirclement and after that we can deal with you, stupid Ottoman. Now the situation looks pretty funny. The good thing is that we have closed the encircle in Altenia and Altenia now belongs to us. We have a cool uh, body by a river. But the bad thing is that we still don't control the Bulgarian lands, oh my god. We control the Serbian lands, we have a little bit control of the Bulgarian lands, but we don't control them almost at all. Like the main Bulgarian territories are occupied by the Ottoman Empire and by Romanians. Fuck, and it's September 1937. Why am I not surprised? And one of my divisions are going to die. And yay, we have encircled two Ottoman divisions, probably we can encircle right now even more. And yay, Turkey has started to evacuate their forces from Greece, so now we can easily capture Greece back. Plus, now we got even more encirclements than before. Ottoman front line is collapsing, as well as the Romanian front line. And you see that now Ottoman front line has fully collapsed, because now we are moving to the our east coastline to take back our lands, and it will be much more easier with that to take back our lands from Romanians. And plus one based encirclement of the Romanian forces, minus four Romanian divisions. Finally, we have stabilized our front line by the end of the February 1938. And the last step is going to retake fully control under our lands and after that push Ottomans away as well as Romanians. We can probably even defeat Ottoman Empire before they start the war against the Cairo Pact and Persia, because defeating Ottoman forces is much more easier than defeating the Romanian forces. Minus three Ottoman divisions. Now the front line has been finally divided between Ottoman front and Romanian front. And the best thing is that now we have access to the Black Sea. Finally, in March 1938, we took it back. May 1937, Constantinople has finally fall, and Ottoman Empire right now has left only in Asia and Africa. Probably by the end of the 1938 we are going to fully capitulate as well as the Ottoman Empire as well as Romania. Since that are happening right now, it's the end for Romania, cause they won't defend Bucharest, Pleiesti, and after that we will easily move to Moldavia, Bessarabia, and that's gonna be the end for them. Plus, their six divisions were encircled. Goodbye, my lovely Romanistan, goodbye, Romanistan, now and forever. It is even better to call it Gypsistan. Belgrad Pact? Bye bye, brothers. Well, Ottomans have really fucked up everything, plus Persia and Armenia have declared war on them, so it's gonna be pretty easy to fully destroy Ottomans and to encircle six divisions who are defeating Gallipoli from Bulgarian forces. Why do we need to sign any treaty with the Ottomans? We will push them out of entire Balkans. Well, it's really funny to capture the Ottoman Empire and seeing how Persia and Armenia easily destroying them, cause all of their forces are located on the main front line. And the post-war Balkans looks like this, we have liberated Montenegro, as well as small Serbia, full-size Romania, and almost a full-size Kingdom of Greece. By November 1938, it is everything that has left from the Ottoman Empire. Very sad situation for them. And finally, Ottomans have capitulated. Now we are going to take a lot of their lands. 
So, partition of Ottoman Empire looks like this. So, the post-war Ottoman Empire looks like this. We have created Syria, Kurdistan, Hashemite Arabia. Also, I have given some territories to the Egypt and also Tripolitania now is my puppet. And I don't want to fight with Yemen because it has no sense. And that's the new bodies of Bulgaria. And what about our population right now? Right now our population is 13.7 million people living in the great gigachat Bulgaria. And if we played for a few more years, we would get the population of 14 or 15 million people. So I think that we have reached our... <laughs> we have reached our goal in the population. I just don't see any sense to play further. Plus, now we understand that it's real to play as Bulgaria and survive the 6th front war. But I don't think that it's real to survive the 7th front war. Maybe we will test it in the future. So yeah guys, thanks for watching and as always, bye! Send me new challenges in the comments.